So the difference between your level service and your uh, sort of level dollar request, your improved service uh, and your level dollar request is, is in um, the hours for some of the uh, inspectors. Right. Um, so this is level service. Walter White used to have 16 hours. Um, yep. Can't even see this, right? Gene, I have paper copies of all this because I think you asked for pa paper copies. Yes. Okay, I have, I have more paper copies okay. for you because you missed the second distribution. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, anyway, we're looking at an inspector going from that had been at 16 hours going, coming up to 20 hours per week. Mm -hmm. um, and we're looking at uh, the, plumbing, the plumbing. The plumbing inspector going from 20. Uh, what does that mean, W slash M? Our plumbing inspector is also our sealer of weights and measures. He does the taxi cabs and the uh, oh, okay. scales. Weights and measures. And okay, thank you. Scales in the stores and um, of that nature. Anyway, and, and you, you're requesting that he go up three hours from 22 hours a week to 25. And that's, that's the difference. That is the difference. <coughs> um, and, looking and for seven hours more <coughs> per week labor on two part-time inspectors. And, and uh, that would be helpful to you. I, yeah, I what, I, what I would say to that, I mean, obviously, when, you, when, our, when our income goes up, construction value goes up, the amount of work goes up. Um, so in the building work, it's obviously we have a, we have a, a, a lot more intense projects, a lot more complicated projects, a lot larger projects, uh, and that's reflective of the, the dollar value. So it takes more time and more, more staff to inspect those and review the plans and deal with the contractors and homeowners. Um, the plumbing, the request on the plumbing inspector, I think, is directly tied to uh, the incentive programs from the state that are, that are allowing people to replace their boilers um, and heating systems. Uh, we, we've seen a big spike in uh, uh, number of permits for that type of work. Uh, and that has increased the, the, the need for the number of inspections. Uh, so that, that's, in a nutshell, what the, the, the purpose of those two increases are. Don't know. Uh, what type of programs are these that uh, being offered and what, um, how are they, what, are they something I expect, you know, do we need inspection for the, what are they? Th those are the mass save programs for the most part. Um, you know, so if you have an older boiler in your house that's inefficient, you can go to mass save and they'll give you, uh, depending on the boiler that you buy, they'll give you certain rebates um, uh, for that boiler to encourage you to hire a plumber <coughs> and, a, and a gas person to, to go out and, um, you know, put a new boiler in your home. So yes, that is inspected. Um, that it's a great deal. Have. I did it. Yeah. Great I actually deal. did it myself it too. Uh, um, you have to be careful who you get though to do the work because uh, my my next door neighbor's got somebody who claimed he was certified by Mass Save and actually wasn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, problems. yeah, and that that that. Could you tie need, up your rebate. Your rebate. You need to see yeah. that certification. Um, so, but so so we're looking at seven hours, and that would a, a week, and that would do the job. Now, if I recall, as soon as you hit go over nineteen hours a week officially, then you become a a different type of employee, employee one that is in for line for more benefits. Benefit right. employee. Mm. Yeah, uh, I'm a benefit. No, this is, this is a benefited position now for as far as vacation and health care. Okay. Um, I don't think I don't think so. Health care. I think the division there is 19, 19 and twenty hours. Is that right? So, so I'm not entirely sure that we're. You're asking for four hours a week, which is nothing, but. A thirty thousand dollar, twenty twenty thousand dollar, you know, insurance policy is attached to that, and it becomes a different kind of a request. I, I, I know I've discussed that with uh, with Anne Marie Fagan um, in the past. 
I don't recall it coming up when I initially proposed this request. Oh, that's I'm why you got sure us. Wasn't, I'm not sure there wasn't a change in that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's it, but we have to we have to check that out. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. Um, I don't know. Um, does anybody have any other questions for Joe? I mean, I think I think uh, Phil. Yeah, uh, Joe. When we're looking at your expenses budget before. Yep. Oh, sorry. I have more questions too. Mm -hmm. The uh, the total is not, it's just under twenty thousand dollars, right? And more than half of it is at a line item called miscellaneous. That was yes. my question. Yes. Thank yes. you, Phil. <laughs> of your budget, right? Which is and, sort of and undescribed. My 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 understanding from day one, and that may have changed with some of the new systems that have come on on board, but that we had these categories. Um, and we couldn't add them. We, we, we couldn't make up our own categories. So 7,500 7, of that is going to be for our IT. In other words, we went to an online permitting system several years ago, uh, and so there was an initial fee to buy that system, but then there's the annual maintenance fees. We actually have two modules, one that handles our permitting and then one that handles our complaints. So the 7,500 7, of that is for... Um, A contract? The, the annual maintenance, yeah, contract type of thing. Okay. We were trying to protect your contracts in case they were going up, and we asked you to level dollar your general expenses. So, for instance, if that contract was six thousand dollars and now it's seven thousand five hundred, by burying it into your general expenses, you are automatically oh, yeah, so. cutting your other expenses by that fifteen hundred increase. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were we were trying to to identify contracts across town and through all budgets. I guess we uh, so we well, missed I that. Yeah, yeah, we missed know. that. Well, we were looking. <clears throat> the only other contract we have really, or actually, would have been like the copier maintenance. Uh, but well, those are those are things that go up, up and and, yeah. and we might not always have the dollars to to support your level service request or in, or. You know, might even have to cut something. So, so we really do need to know what the contracts are, what they were last year, and yep. what they were actually in 14, what they were, what you think they are, are this year, because maybe you've signed a contract for it already, and then what you think it's going to be in 16. So, yeah, if you can amend. Schedule A. Schedule mm -hmm. Well, oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the Excel spreadsheets Entree. that were okay. developed for this year's budget template uh, will populate some of the Schedule A amounts if you put them in properly in Schedule E general expenses. Um, so, so yeah, if you could look at that and get back to yes, us on definitely. that, because right. because if you have so now the other thing is I'm sure you can. So, so a large part of that would come out of miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. So, seventy-five hundred. So, so, yeah, the whole thing, the, all of it. That's that's where I would. That's where I had that. So, uh -huh. it's, it's all contracts and miscellaneous. Uh, no, so so another fifteen hundred uh, of that is. Copy um, machine. No, actually, this is for for uh, 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 updated codes, updated code books uh, this year. Uh, the code the the state is going to. Um, uh, they, they put out new versions of the building code, in theory, every three years, but this time it only happened every six. So the, we are currently operating on the 2009 building code. We skipped the 2012. Uh, and we're, we're going to adopt the 2015, or we're going to be made to adopt the 2015. So years ago the state used we used to write our own building code and we used to plagiarize codes from various code writing agencies across the country and and they got in trouble for that a couple of years ago so now they adopt these national codes which are put out by private publishing companies this one happens to be icc or the international code council so we then have to buy our code books from from that company and then massachusetts has its own set of amendments to make those codes uh, unique to Massachusetts, but along with those code books also comes a new round of standards from NFPA and um, I don't know the 
names are escaping me at the moment, but um, most, most, the majority of our codes, our fire sprinkler code, our fire alarm code, um, all, all come from National Fire Protection Agency, which is also a private publishing company. So when the building codes get updated, we also have to get the current versions of those supplements to the code, um, or, or reference standards as, as we call them. So when you're out in the field, do you have all these codes in a handheld device of some sort that you can refer no, to? No, no, all, all of that is done. That's, that's, that's to do the work in the office. That's for the plan review process. So, so if somebody comes in and... You actually physically go through the book to the relevant portion? Yes. Okay. Yes, you have to. And, and it's, not, it's not digitized in any shape, form, or fashion? Oh, it can be, but it's the same price. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care if you, so they print it and put it in paper. It's just easier for us to use when we have the book there because sometimes you have to take it to the counter. Uh, so mm -hmm. you, you know, sometimes, sometimes there are occasions where we take the books out in the field, but that's kind of rare. Um, so, so this is basically Massachusetts law, building yeah. code. Oh, yeah. And, and isn't the law available for free? No. 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 You know, actually, actually, some of it is in a read-only version, but not printable. Um, I was told I could use my iPhone to take a picture of each and every 800 pages. <laughs> so it's available in a read-only if a read -only you version, but the you do it. But the reference standards, the NFP, the NFPA standards, are only the current version. So, for example, in the, in the 2009 code, building code that we're under now, we reference. 2007 NFPA standards, for example, or it could be 2004, depending mm -hmm. on which it is. If you were to go and look at the NFPA site today, you could read only a 2012 version, but you can't do a read only on the prior version, so you have to buy them one way or another. It's That's just yeah. cost of doing business, I guess. Um, so. Can you tell us, yeah, I don't want to get too diverted here, but what is that, what is the controversy about the fire codes in new apartment construction? The controversy about fire codes? Whether or not you're going to apply the new sprinkler codes or not to, to buildings that have, you know, got underway or... I think we're talking codes. about the, the Permit Extension Act in where a, a building, a potential building, down at Adams Street was um, permitted back in 2008 under, we were then under the, the sixth edition of the building code. We're now in the eighth edition, but because of this Permit Extension Act, which, which mandated some statutory extensions, but then allowed the local, at the local level, for us to further extend it. So someone had requested for that one particular building that I extend that particular permit um, for, this, for this development to happen down on Adams Street. Um, and the question was raised that what exactly are the differences between the 2006 and the 2009? Um, that would take, that would take uh, a, a, a monumental effort to compare the features in that 2006 building, or, or, or let's say the sixth edition building to the, to the eighth edition building. Um, is it, would there have been a substantial difference? Not so much in fire sprinkler. The, the bigger, the bigger uh, changes that happened in the building code between the sixth and the eighth were in seismic design or earthquake design. Um, so it would have been a, a bigger structural issue uh, for that company. Uh, to redes redesign the frame of that building as opposed to redesigning the sprinkler system. Okay. So Thank you. That's, that's the Reader's Digest version. Great. <laughs> um, so does anybody have any other questions for, for Joe tonight? No. Well, it's good for us when you're busy. So we're glad you're busy and... and uh, I could use a couple of nice blizzards to just <laughs> slow things down. And <laughs> let us catch up. Um, catch up with Joe. Sorry. Sorry. No, no joke for those. Thank you for coming in, Joe. Really Thanks, appreciate Joe. it. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe.
you very much. Good luck with the, with the building season. So, so I don't have anything else this evening, um, and I hope everybody has plans for a, a nice long weekend. No one's uh, coming in Monday. Nobody's coming. We don't have a meeting happy. Monday. Go Monday. You can come in if you wish. We're closed. <laughs> okay. <it's Yeah>. up. <laughs> I'll give you the keys. <laughs> How about Wednesday? Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, the email I sent out at 4:23 has the schedule. Has the schedule. There are a few. There are a few departments um, that I haven't scheduled, but I have most of the schedule in shape. Late of three departments on next week, and I'm maybe adding a fourth. So. Oh, motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you.